conducted with George J. Zabransky on uh, March the 8th, 1996 in Houston, Texas. The interviewer is Dr. Vernon L. Williams with the Department of History at Abilene Christian University. Mr. Zabransky was in Battery B of the 495th Armored Field Artillery in the 12th Armored Division. Mr. Zabransky, if you uh, would tell us a little bit about who your family was, where you grew up, and uh, a little bit about your background preceding World War II. I was, I was born in, in Schulenburg, Texas. And uh, I went to school in Schulenburg High School in 1941. I graduated, and then I went to Houston to work at the Houston shipyard, and I stayed there for a while. And I got a deferment there for about six, six months. And then I went into service. I went to Fort Sam Houston. And uh, from Fort Sam Houston, they sent me to uh, Fort Knox. And I stayed there 17 weeks. And after that, I went to Camp Barkley after 17 weeks of training. Now, what, uh, what time period is this? When, when do you go into the service? When did I go in? Uh, let's see, I went in October 19th, 1943. Okay. And when you go to Fort Knox, what are you doing uh, there? Is that uh, basic training? Basic or? training, basic training. 17 weeks of basic training. Uh, did you uh, do any advanced training at all there? No, I just got your basic training and then you got shipped out. And so you came to uh, Camp Barkley. Uh, That's right. Were you alone, or did you come with other men? I came with a bunch of men, several men. What do you remember? They were going to ship out. They're going to ship out overseas. So that's what we was waiting on. What, uh, what do you remember about that day when you arrived in Abilene? Well, <laughs> I, well, we was trying to get a place to, you know, get your lodging together, where you're going to sleep and all that, and get your bedrolls and all that together. That's about it. That's... You know, he was kind of lost there, you know. <laughs> and all of those guys were kind of mad because they go were going overseas and they was went to the bar and was drinking a lot and it was feeling pretty good. <laughs> well, how long were you at Camp Barkley before they shipped over? Oh, not too long. I guess about a month. That and then we went overseas. So you were there in time for really just the final preparations. That's right. What do you remember about uh, Abilene? This well, I didn't go in that town much. You know, didn't have much time. I didn't know too much about Abilene. Don't remember anything about the uh, Blue Bonnet Brigade girls or the USOs or any no, of that? No, not really. Not really. We shipped out right away, you know. Well, when you got to B Battery, uh, did you receive any further training or... Uh, no, we just uh, got our stuff together and uh, got everything, uh, our tanks and all our guns, you know, got it cleaned up in Cosmoline and got it ready for the ship. That was about it. When you think back to the Barclay days and maybe even later as you're traveling to New York and then overseas, yeah. uh, of the men that you served with, uh, maybe the sergeants and the officers, uh, do any of those men stand out in your memory? Well, uh, I like I, I I had a lot of respect for the the uh, colonel. Colonel, I can't think of his name right now, but uh, I don't think I have his name now. They know Hockman. Yeah, that was his name, Colonel Hockman, and he was in San Antonio. That one time when we had that reunion, and then he got sick and he died. He lived in California, but he was a nice fellow. Did you uh, have uh, any uh, close friends in the battery? Oh yeah, I had quite a, quite a few close friends, yeah. Can you tell us about any of them? Well, <laughs> I, I can't tell too much about them. Uh, they were just, you know, about like I was. Uh, other than that, I don't know if I knew anything else, you know, real, real guy. Everybody was for himself, really, you know. <clears throat> Tell me about the uh, day that you all uh, get all your personal gear together uh, 
and they're told to get on the train. Uh, uh, how did that work out? And tell us a little bit about the train trip back east. Uh, I guess you were going to Camp Shanks. Yeah. Well, it was a long trip, and, and uh, we was on this train, and there's a lot of uh, smoke, you know, dust and stuff from the engines. The the uh, what they call the smoke that had the engine, I can't think of it. But anyway, it's uh, it had a lot of that. Your clothes were all full of that stuff, you know. It was hot. It was hot. Had to keep the windows open. That's right. Yeah. So you're saying there's no air conditioning? No, there was no <laughs> air conditioning. <laughs> Do you remember uh, along the way if you ever saw crowds uh, uh, at towns as you passed through, or did you stop? Do you remember anything about that? No, I don't think there was any crowds. We just went on through, you know. We never did really stop. What about uh, the train ride itself? Uh, how'd you all occupy your time? Well, I guess you just uh, sit there and walk, look out the window. That's about it, you know. I didn't read anything, you know, like some of them do. But uh, just stay out there and wait for the train to go. You hear the train knocking, and that's it. What about uh, Camp Shanks, New York? Uh, what did you do there? Well, we uh, got our GI haircut there, for one thing. And uh, we just took... I guess we were there for about three or four days, you know. Did you get a pass to New York City? Not really. I didn't get no pass to New York City. I, I, <clears throat> I got a, after I came back out. I went, we went on a pass to New York City, but not not before we went to was getting ready to go overseas. What ship did you go over to England on? Uh, General Bliss. Did, what do you remember about that voyage? Well, I know it. We we all got on that trip. Getting on there was, uh, you know, you had all your duffel bag and all that, all just, and you had to get on the ship, you know, and just like cattle, you know, he'd load you up like cattle, and. Uh, That, that's about it. You didn't have too much room. You'd be you'd be rubbing your nose against some of the fellow's back. You know that's how you know they was in these. Uh, I can't think of it. What what I want to say, but uh, the the bedding. Yeah, uh, right, right, right. The stacked up pretty high. Yeah, that's pretty high. That was pretty thick. You can you'd be sitting there and you'd be rubbing the rubbing the, the, your nose against his back. What about uh, seasickness? Do you have any trouble with that? Oh yeah, <laughs> I was sick. Oh yeah, I was pretty sick. I was, there was guys vomiting, and they'd go on the top of the deck and vomit there. And it, it just it was pretty pretty bad. <clears throat> so it was a pretty rough crossing. Yeah, it was. It was pretty pretty rough. Uh, where do you go next? Uh, to England? To Tidworth? And we went to England. Uh, let's see, I believe that was uh, the place. It was an air, air base. We, we went to an air base and they picked us up. And uh, But I left Southampton to go to, to, uh, to uh, Fr uh, France, you know. What do you remember about those first days of combat uh, after getting into well, France? <laughs> You 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 heard, you've seen uh, people dying, you know, dead people along the road, and and uh, you didn't really know what to think. You just try to stay alive. That's 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 the thing, you know. What was your specific job within the battery? What did you do? I was on a ta on one of these M7 tanks, and we loaded the guns. The uh, the shells into the into the muzzle. Yeah. Do you remember any of the others in your crew? Yeah, I, I guess I do. Yeah, I remember those guys. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about them. Well, they, they was kind of like me, you know. They uh, 
we was all on a tank, you know. Everybody had their own jobs, and, and uh, we'd fire missions, you know. And uh, you would, uh, <clears throat> you would. Uh, uh, let's see, I can't think of. We'd fire missions every so often, you know, at a crossing and see if we'd catch an enemy on, on one of the road crossings. Who was the tank commander? Uh, a fellow named, uh, the tank commander is, uh, no, let's see. I got it written down here. I just sent that book over there, but I can't think of his okay. name. He, but he's dead. He died. Damn, I can't think of his name. Any uh, Anybody still living that was a member of your crew? Yeah, I think there's a few guys. Uh, Lieutenant Sites still living, and and uh, about three or four or five guys living yet. Are most of them uh, members of the association? Yeah, I so would say so. You've yeah. seen them since the war. Oh yeah, I've seen them. Yeah. How, how long have you been a member of the association? I guess uh, probably about ten years. Mr. Hampling, Hampling or whatever his mm -hmm. name is. Paul. Paul. Yeah, he's the one that got me on. You didn't know before that of the existence of the association? No, I sure didn't. <laughs> it's until he wrote, wrote me a letter and got, got me in, involved. What's your memory of the Battle of Hurlsheim? Well, let's see, there were so many battles. <laughs> uh, I is that the battle when he was trying to come through, break through? I believe it was. Wasn't it? The, it was the uh, town where they lost so many tanks and uh, yeah. so many men were captured by the Germans, too. That's right, that's right. Well... Just above Strasbourg, I believe. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we, uh, I know one time they, they said, uh, you better hurry up and get, get out of here because the, the enemy is coming, you know. We left... The, we left our guns and everything and put grenades in them. You set them off so it, you know, ruined the, the guns. But when we came back, and they didn't even go off. And we got, got our tanks back. You know, the, the grenade that burns the, the, in, the, in the chambers, mm -hmm. burn it and ruin it. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> well, what stands out in your mind most about uh, the combat period? Well, uh, <clears throat> we you never did know when the Germans were around, you know, especially uh, you go to the lunch kit, go to the lunch and first thing you know, you have a bullet would fly right by your head, you know, so some German be shooting at you. And, uh, but I know one time we uh, we was shooting that uh, ninety degrees, and then we went and shot the other way back because the Germans were on the back side too, you know. <laughs> so you didn't know where they was at. It was kind of at the end of the war, you know. And there's Germans everywhere. What about uh, French civilians and German civilians? You ever and have any encounters with them uh, in their homes or any in any context? Yeah, that was, you know, we used to stay in German homes, you know, and uh, this one, this German woman, she's always, she was real nice. She wanted us to take care of the house, you know, so they didn't tear it up, you know, and uh, she was real nice. How did you communicate with her? Did she speak English? Well, we made it some way. Yeah, she, she could speak a little, little bit. We can make it. Uh, did she cook for you? What? Uh, how was living conditions there in that particular house for well, you? Well, we 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 didn't ever had for their for their you know for them to cook our food. You know, we ate ate out. You know, we ate in the, the battery. Yeah. What about prisoners of war, Germans? Well, there was quite a few uh, quite a few prisoners. You know, when we went. Uh, we, of course, they wouldn't fight no more, you know. And, but we had about five thousand prisoners run one time over there, and uh, they didn't. And they could have just blowed us out if they wanted to, but they didn't. Hmm. Yeah. What about the death camps? 
do you remember anything about uh, Landsberg or any of the other camps that where you uh, liberated? Well, uh, there was a, we liberated a lot of Air Force guys, you know, that got shot down, mm -hmm. and they was they they was coming walking down the road and going back to uh, get liberated, you know. But you don't remember any of the uh, Jewish death camps? I tell you what, about f five years ago, we went to Germany and we went through these camps where they cremated these people. Mm -hmm. It's something to see, man, I tell you. Where they cremated these Jews, they really did. Yeah. What about Heidenheim? Do you remember anything about uh, that after the war's over and occupation duty? Did you Heidenheim, have I, can't, I can't remember, Heidenheim. Uh, well, how long did you stay with the 12th? In other words, at what point do you leave? Well, I left in about 40, uh, oh, I guess in 46. I got discharged in June the 8th, 40, 46. And, uh, you know, if you had enough points, well, you could go on and get, get discharged. And did you have the points to get discharged? Well, yeah, after a while I got it. Not right away, but uh, later on I got enough points. What happened then? Uh, you, did you, where'd you go in the United States? When Where did we come in the United yeah, States? Yeah, when you came home. Okay, we left from Germany. We left from Germany and went on a ship and went to New York and then we went to Fort Sam Houston. And I got discharged in Fort Sam Houston. Was there any talk there at Fort Sam of sending you to Japan? Uh, of course, that's uh, that was already over with. But that's right. uh, occupation duty or anything? No, no I didn't. You I had the points. To, you yeah, had the I point. had enough points, so I didn't need to. I, I could have got out. You know, I wouldn't have to go and stay in. So Sorry. after you got out of the army, uh, where'd you go? Well, I, I went to Schulenburg, and uh, I I worked around there for a while, and uh, <clears throat> yes. Then I worked for the highway department for a while. And then I went and came, came back to Houston. And what did you do career-wise in what, those years in Houston? What did I do in Houston? Well, I worked for Coon Paint Company for a while, for about 11 years. Uh, where along the line did you get married? And how did, uh, oh, who I was got she? married in 47. Where did you meet her? Well, she was from Weimar. I met her in Weimar. That's a little, not too far from Schutenberg, about eight miles from Schutenberg. And what is her name? What was her maiden name? Her name was Viola Bridup. Bridup. B-R-E-I-T-H-A-U-P-T. Bridup. See, her dad came from Germany. She was a German girl. Yeah. And children? Yeah, we got one boy and two girls. One of our girls married a baseball player, Mark Thurman. He played for the San Diego Padres, and he was there about eight years. And then they uh, played in the World Series, so we got to see the World Series. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Is he still in baseball? No, he got out of baseball. He uh, he played for let's see, San Diego, San Diego, Detroit, Detroit Tigers, and Baltimore. Orioles. The Orioles, right. And Never then he tried to play for Houston, and he did He got. They say he was too old. Well, that's too bad. Yeah. Because we all know that that's the best team. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Well, can you think of anything else uh, about your war experience or people you met that you'd like to add that uh, you haven't had a chance to talk about? Well. There was a few guys that I thought I'd get to see, you know, uh, that was in service with in Germany. That, and I found out later on that he got hit. He, he lived in Rosaki, Texas. It was close to Smithville. And he got hit by a train and got killed. So I lost him. What? Uh, who was he? Uh, uh, Womack. Womack. W-O-M-A-C-K. What was his first name? Darn. Let's see. I can't think of his first name. But he was in B Battery with you? He was in B Battery. We, we can look it up. And what was, what was the town he was from? Rosanke. Rosanke. It's close to Smithville. Up up near uh, 
Close uh, to the Grange, you high, know. High, high, highway 71. There you go. That's right. Uh, does he have any family living? If he got any, I don't know. I never did get to check on that. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? Well, I know it was quite an experience. I know that. <laughs> yes, it was. It was quite an experience. Have you uh, shared any of your memories with your children? Are they interested in? Yeah, yeah, they they are. They're interested. Well, thank you very much. Okay.